Welcome everyone to the Ann Arbor District Library story time. It seems like it's been a while since I've seen you and I missed you all. My name is Christopher and we've got some great stories today. But first, you know how I like to begin with a little song called Clap Everybody and Say Hello. It goes like this. Clap everybody and say hello, say hello, say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Welcome to story time. Well, if you could clap while I try to play banjo, it would help me out a lot. Let's try it with an instrument here. Clap everybody and say hello. Say hello, say hello, clap everybody and say hello, welcome to story time. Were you clapping? <laughs> All right. Now, you know, I like to say hello in lots of languages around the world. Let's try Hawaiian. Aloha. Clap everybody and say aloha, say aloha, say aloha. Clap everybody and say aloha, welcome to story time. How about Ibo, Ndeowonu? Clap everybody and say Ndeowonu, say Ndeowonu, say Ndeowonu. Clap everybody and say Ndeowonu, welcome to story time. How about Hebrew? We haven't done that in a while. Shalom. Clap everybody and say shalom, say shalom, say shalom. Clap everybody and say shalom. Welcome to story time. Welcome everyone. We're going to have a great time today. Whoa, almost lost my hat. Now, before we get going, let's get some energy moving and some blood pumping with O Duke of York. And I think he's coming. Are you ready? The grand old Duke of York. He had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. I think you've got it. We can probably pick up the pace a little bit, right? <laughs> The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. Super fast! The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men, he marched him up to the top of the hill, he marched him down again, and when you're up, you're up, and when you're down, you're down, and when you're only halfway up, you're neither up or down. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Well, let's take a look and see what we have next. Oh, I think it's about time to get our theme of the day. What are all of our stories going to be about? Well, let's see, I've got... Something here. No, that's not the right way. Yeah, it's the letter R. All of our stories today have something to do with a particular word that begins with R. Can you think of any words that begin with R to help me out? Hmm. Well, there's rhinoceros. That would be great. There is... Uh, ruminant, <laughs> that'd be kind of funny. Uh, you'll have to ask your parents what a ruminant is. And there's also, hmm, rivers. Well, you know, we don't have any stories today about ruminants, rhinoceroses, or rivers, but we do have stories today all about, hmm, crown? No, crown doesn't start with an R all about royalty. 
That means kings and queens, princes and princesses, and I think even a duke might be considered minor royalty. So we've got our theme already up and running. All right, before we get into our story, so I've got some great announcements. This Saturday at 11 a.m., it's another great episode of The Saturday Show, where you get to see so many of your favorite storytellers and staff members from the library telling you all about lots of cool things. It's one of my favorite shows on AADL.TV. And then on Monday, every Monday, it's baby time for our youngest patrons, age 0 to 2, and their parents. We can invite them as well. It's a great time for our littlest kids who enjoy songs and stories. And now... On with the show! Our first story today is this great, bo this great book, Princess Hyacinth, The Surprising Tale of a Girl Who Floated by Florence Perry Hyde. I think you're going to love it. Do you like my crown? I didn't ask you, but I hope you like it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Princess Hyacinth had a problem. It was a most unusual problem, and not something that you could see by just looking at her. She'd had this problem her whole life. The problem was she floated. If you didn't grab a hold of her, she would go up and up and up higher into the air. So the king and queen devised an ingenious strategy. They weighted all of her clothes down with so many jewels and diamonds and sparkling things that she was weighted down so heavy. Even her crown was made extra heavy, attached with a rhinestone strap to keep it on her. Every day, she would look out her window at all the children playing in the yard and swimming, and she would be there with her heavy, heavy crown. Now, one of the children in particular often came to her window. It was a little red-haired boy curiously named Boy, and he would come by and say hello, and maybe come by again and say hello another day. And in fact, he had come quite a few times to say hello. And Princess Hyacinth said, Wow, I very much admire your kite, for Boy loved flying kites. And he had put a beautiful picture of the princess's crown on his kite. And Boy returned the compliment and said, I very much admire your crown. And he mumbled, and I like you too. The princess wasn't sure if he had said, I like you too, or maybe toodaloo, or maybe... Cock-a-doodle-doo? She wasn't sure, but she was happy to have a friend. That day, all the children had finished playing and gone home, and the princess decided she wanted to go out as well. So she walked to the park. Really, it was more like she dragged herself to the park she felt so weighted down by her heavy, heavy crown. Who do you think she ran into but the balloon seller? And she looked up at the balloons and thought, I want to float as well. So she got an extra string from the, from the balloon seller. She tied it around her wrist. And she took off her crown and her weighted dress 
and floated up into the air, still tethered by the string that the balloon seller was holding. She loved being up there. The view was beautiful. Uh-oh. Suddenly, a dog ran out, startled the balloon seller, and all the balloons and the princess started to float away. Now, the princess wasn't startled or scared. She just loved looking at the view. But she was floating rather high into the sky. The balloon seller immediately went to the castle to alert the king and queen what had happened. And the king looked out with his binoculars to see his daughter floating into the air while Princess Hyacinth was floating around. And suddenly, what appeared in the middle of the air? Her crown. She reached out to grab it and realized it was the crown on Boy's kite. She started to get all tangled up in the kite string. And suddenly, she felt that she was going back down to the ground. Because when Boy felt something tugging on the kite, he decided to reel it in. And in that way, Princess Hyacinth got back down to the ground. Well, from that day on, every morning, the princess knew what she wanted to do because she had never had so much fun. She would float off into the sky, and whenever she wanted to come back down, she would grab onto the kite, and boy would reel her in. And they passed many beautiful summer days that way. The end. Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hope you like that unusual story of Princess Hyacinth who floated in the air. Well, I think it's about time to call one of our friends, don't you? Let's see. Who could that be? I feel like we haven't seen Ralph in a while. Is that right? Oh, Ralph! Oh, there he is. Hey, Ralph. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> Listen, Ralph, are you ready for some, uh, some swimming, dancing, jumping, strolling, playing? Lots of things we could do. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started. Oh, fly any way you want to. Fly any way you please. Fly any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. That was kind of an uneventful thing to do, wasn't it? Flying? Yeah. <laughs> Let's try something traditional. Oh, dance any way you want to. Dance any way you please. Dance any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. That was more fun. How about we try some swimming? We haven't done any swimming in a while, have we? All right. Oh, swim any way you want to. Swim any way you please. Swim any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. <laughs> Did you stop? Oh, hop any way you want to, hop any way you please, hop any way you want to, but stop when I say freeze. Oh, Ralph, are you getting a little bit tired? Yeah. <laughs> You've got quite a gravelly voice. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ralph. Listen, I think it's time for a little sleeping for me, nibbling for you, Ralph. Sleeping? Maybe we could both sleep today, okay? All right. 
Oh. Oh. Sleep any way you want to. Sleep any way you please. Well, sleep any way you want to. Oh, but stop when I say freeze. Oh, all that shouting woke us up. <laughs> all right. Well, Ralph, shall we say goodbye? Bye. <laughs> all right. See you next time, Ralph, okay? Well, it's always fun to see a friend, isn't it? We've got another great story today. It is The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch and Michael Marchenko. And it goes like this. Princess Elizabeth lived in a castle and she wore beautiful clothes. She was all ready to eventually get married to Prince Ronald. But very suddenly and unexpectedly, a dragon showed up, burned down the castle, and carried away Ronald. Now, dragon, that wasn't very nice, was it? Hey, don't you bite me, I'm the storyteller. So there was Princess Elizabeth with nothing to wear and a burned up castle. She thought, I can do this myself. So she looked around for something to wear. All she could find was a paper bag, but it was enough to cover her, and she set out. Where do you think Ronald was? She wanted to rescue him. Well, it was easy. She just followed the path of scorched earth and burn marks and eventually came to the dragon's lair. Elizabeth walked up to the big door and knocked hard on the door, and the dragon opened up and said, Go away! I'm full! For indeed, the dragon had eaten a whole village that day and was not even the least bit hungry. But Elizabeth wanted to rescue Ronald, so she thought... I have an idea. And so she knocked, knocked, knocked again on the door. And the dragon opened and said, Go away! And Elizabeth said, Dragon, is it true you're so smart? Yep. Dragon, is it true that you can burn up a hundred Forest with your fiery breath? Yup. Well, let's see it. And so the dragon inhaled deep and blew out his fiery breath and a hundred forests burned up. Well, Elizabeth said, could you do that again? And the dragon drew in a deep breath and nothing came out, for the dragon's fiery breath was all used up. And Elizabeth said, Dragon, I heard you're so fast at flying. Do you think you could fly around the world in just a few minutes? And the dragon said, Yup. And indeed, the dragon took off and ran and ran and ran, and came back <sighs> huffing and puffing, so exhausted. And Elizabeth said, could you do that again? And the dragon said, yup, and took off running and running, and came back more exhausted than ever. <gasps> I... <sighs> did it. And the dragon keeled over, dead asleep. 
Elizabeth said, Oh, dragon. No response. Elizabeth said it louder. Oh, dragon. Still no response. So Elizabeth got right up to the dragon and said, Oh, dragon. And the dragon was surely asleep. So Elizabeth ran into the cave to rescue Ronald finally. She took one look at Ronald and said, Ronald, let's go. And Ronald said, hmm, Elizabeth, you're wearing a paper bag. You smell of soot and ashes. Hmm. Why don't you come back when you are dressed more properly like a real princess? Well, Elizabeth did not expect to hear that. She said, Ronald, your hair is nice. You smell like beautiful cologne, but you are a bum, and I'm not going to marry you. And she didn't. The end. Thank you all for listening. I love that story so much. Now I think it might be time for the good doctor. Oh, Dr. Knickerbocker! And here he comes. Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. I just got back and I'm feeling fine. Now I've got the rhythm of the head tap tap. You've got the rhythm of the head tap tap. I've got the rhythm of the nose honk honk. You've got the rhythm of the nose honk honk. I've got the rhythm of the shoulders do wop. You've got the rhythm of the shoulders do wop. I've got the rhythm of the elbows bonk bonk. You've got the rhythm of the elbows bonk bonk. Tap tap, honk honk, do wop, bonk bonk. Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. I just got back and I'm feeling fine. Now I've got the rhythm of the hands clap, clap. You've got the rhythm of the hands clap, clap. I've got the rhythm of the finger snip, snap. You've got the rhythm of the finger snip, snap. I've got the rhythm of the tummy tap, tap. You've got the rhythm of the tummy tap, tap. I've got the rhythm of the hips, ooh wee. You've got the rhythm of the hips, ooh wee! Clap, clap, snip, snap, tap, tap, ooh wee! Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine, a one, a two, a three, four, five, a six, a seven, a eight, and nine. I say a one, a two, a three, four, five, a six, a seven, a eight, and nine. <laughs> Good job, everyone. I don't know if we'll ever make it to 10 for that bonus clap. Who could say? Well, we've got one more wonderful story that I want to read to you today. It's one of my favorites. Sorry about the, the shine. It's called King Bidgoods in the Bathtub by Audrey Wood and illustrated by Don Wood. And here it is. Help, help, cried the page when the sun came up. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, cried the knight when the sun came up. Get out, it's time to battle. Come in, cried the king with a boom, boom, boom. Today we battle in the tub. Help, help, cried the page when the sun got hot. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, cried the queen when the sun got hot. Get out, it's time 
to lunch. Come in, cried the king with a yum, yum, yum. Today we lunch in the tub. Help, help, cried the page when the sun sank low. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, cried the duke when the sun sank low. Get out, it's time to fish. Come in, cried the king with a trout, trout, trout. Today we fish in the tub. Help, help, cried the page when the night got dark. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? We do, cried the court when the night got dark. Get out for the masquerade ball. Come in, cried the king with a jig, jig, jig. Tonight we dance in the tub. Help, help, cried the court when the moon shone bright. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? Who knows what to do? I do, said the page when the moon shone bright, and then he pulled the plug. Glub, glub, glub. One of my favorites. All right. It's just about time for the pirate song. Are you ready? Okay. I should have a pirate hat instead of a crown, but that's all right. When I was one, I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I jumped aboard a pirate ship and the captain said to me, Oh, you'll go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should make a pirate hat for next time. We'll see. All right. It's time to say goodbye. And you know how we say goodbye? It's with our friend, the Limber Jack, and <clears throat> let's see if we can get arranged here. There was a girl from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown, and sit back down. 
There was a princess with common sense who knew all about self-reliance. The only other thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. No oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown, and sit back down. The king would not get out, even when the page started to shout. The only thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. No oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown, and sit back down. There was a teeny tiny man, too close, who loved to do and stands. Do you think he can do it today? Oh, ho, ho, he fell right off my rod. Okay. The only thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. No, oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Super fast. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Wiggle, wiggle fingers right up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers and wave them all goodbye. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>